this is uh, a meditation on water from my, uh, my most recent book, Raising Elijah, um, which is largely about environmental threats to children's health, um, but talks a lot about fracking because I think uh, that's the biggest threat to this generation of children that I can think of. Uh, and so um, this uh, section I'm going to read is not about the poisoning of water, but it's about something else that happens during fracking, which is the disappearance of water. You know, when we, um, when we entomb water inside deep geological strata, it's no longer connected to the water cycle. Um, it's not connected to the, our water table. It's not groundwater anymore. It's not rain. It's not surface water. It's basically uh, has disappeared. And humans have never done that in large amounts. So all the water that's ever here on Earth has been here forever. Um, and it just kind of goes around in this great cycle. And, and humans have never made, never destroyed water before. But that's part of what fracking does. And it does it in really large quantities. So, I, uh, so that inspired me to write this. Fracking makes water disappear. This is worth thinking hard about. Usually when we say that water is being wasted because, say, some misinformed soul opens a car wash in the middle of the desert, we don't mean that water itself exits the water cycle. Washing water might draw down a reserve or deplete an aquifer, but the water itself is merely transferred to a different place on the proverbial wheel, which is forever turning. When you brush your teeth, water flows via plumbing from a municipal well to a sewage treatment plant and then heads down the river to somewhere else. It's not really gone, although the resulting depletion of aquifers is nevertheless a hugely serious problem. When a farmer pumps groundwater to irrigate a field, the moisture enters the root hairs of the crop plant, exits the stomata of leaves, rises as vapor to the clouds, and comes back down as rain. If not falling on some watershed from whence it came, then maybe falling on another one a couple time zones away or in all the ships at sea. Conversely, what happens to water during fracking is different to what happens to water when you brush your teeth and leave the tap on. When a single well is fracked, several million gallons of fresh water are removed from lakes and streams or from groundwater aquifers and are entombed in deep geological strata up to a mile or more below the water table. Once there, it is removed from the water cycle permanently, as in forever. It will no longer swirl with tadpoles or ripple with fish. It will no longer ascend into clouds, freeze into snowflakes, melt into rivulets, cascade over rocks, turn with the tide, soak into soil, rise through roots, or flow from your tap. It will never again become blood, tears, sweat, urine, milk, sap, nectar, yolk, honey, or the juice of a fruit. It will never again float a leaf boat, swell a bud, quench a thirst, fill a swamp, spill over an edge, slosh, dribble, spray, trickle, splash, drip, or glisten. Never again fog, mist, frost, ice, dew, or rain. It's gone. Not that you would want it to come back. It's poisonous now. <laughs> 